Welcome to the Swim Strong Dry Land podcast. We are dedicated to inspiring and educating the swimming world. Our podcast highlights the work, character, and achievements in and around the Swim Strong community. Very excited to introduce Megan Rourke to everybody for our podcast today. Before we get to know her a little bit, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. So, Megan, are you ready? I'm ready. So, what would be your walkout song? Um, I would do uh, Trademark USA by Baby Keem, I think, right now. Right now. How about favorite candy? I'm more of just like a chocolate, like dark chocolate person. How about what's your, what's your spirit animal? Um, I would do like a shark. Why? Um, I feel like I just like to attack things. I don't know. Like, that's, <laughs> that's... Just, like yeah. I love it. Hopefully. What is an odd talent that you have? I'm really good at handstands and like walking around on my hands and stuff. Yeah. yeah. How about dream vacation spot? Um, I would either go to like a national park like Yosemite or probably the Bahamas. And f- favorite pre-race meal? Uh, kava. Kava. That's a yeah. good one. All right. We are going to go ahead and jump in to your story so i'm excited for everybody to get to know you personally and so first if we could just start tell us a little bit about yourself your swim journey what life has looked like for you up to this point um so i'm from new jersey and i swim on the wyckoff sharks for my senior year and then um from like when i was eight until uh, my junior year i swam on the rigid breakers and um i tried out when i was eight I think because my brother tried out my younger brother we swam on like a summer league team and they thought he was really good and they told him to go try out for a team and they didn't tell me that because obviously I wasn't <laughs> that good um and but like as a competitive little girl I guess I was like what the heck like I want to try out for some team too so I made my mom let me try out also and I was also playing like basketball soccer I did gymnastics I was playing lacrosse um but I really wanted to try out for swimming and I ended up making the team. Me and my brother both did. Um, and then I just, I swam very, not very often. I didn't go to a lot of practices cause I was playing so many other sports until maybe like sixth grade when I started, like I dropped soccer and I dropped gymnastics. I was like basketball across and swim. Um, and like one of my coach in seventh grade, seventh, eighth grade, he, helped me realize I did have like more of a potential. And if I actually came to practice and put some effort into it, it wasn't just for fun. Like if I put a little hard work into it, I could actually see some results that I wanted to, that other people were seeing. Um, So I ended up dropping basketball as well. And I started going to practice more often. I would actually try. He definitely helped me um, develop like a hunger to be successful and, it was like, I think seventh, eighth grade was like the first time I really um, had some goals for swimming that I wanted to achieve. And I think that's kind of when I really fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Um, So going into freshman year, I wasn't that fast, but that's kind of where I developed as a swimmer and it started becoming my focus. And that's, I guess, where I am now. Yeah. And so you played all these sports growing up, which is awesome. And I love it when people play multiple sports growing up so you can develop as an athlete. Um, And then as you got older and older, you started to fall more and more in love with swimming and focus more on that. I think that's amazing. Um, It explains why a lot of why you had success you had um, because you chose a sport that you loved. And I'm wondering, what was it specifically about swimming that you loved where each of the other sports kind of, even though you enjoyed them, they fell by the wayside and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, even lacrosse being one of your favorite sports too. What was it like letting go of each of those sports and why was swimming the one that you were like, this is the one. Yeah, it was definitely hard for some of the sports, especially like soccer. My mom was the coach of the the rec team that I played (laughs) on. So she was, she wasn't like, so excited about that but um I think that just swimming obviously it's an individual sport but I really loved like once I actually showed up I really developed like a deep connection with my teammates and um just being in it together every day in and out like every set's hard getting through it together I guess that kind of drew me to it um 
and I really liked the grind. I feel like not not a lot of sports you practice. You don't practice six days a week. Like you aren't there for two hours a day. Um, you don't go work out after. I I mean obviously some people do, but I really think that swim is like very individual in that, and like you are always working at it, and it takes like a special type of person to be a swimmer. And I really I really like that about the sport because I think that makes us like very I don't know how to explain it very like it shows how much drive that we have and how much we yeah. want to succeed by how much we effort and work we and time we put into swimming so I yeah. think that's definitely one of the things that drew me to it so it's interesting you talked about picking swimming because of how challenging it was which most people I feel like would run the other way away from swimming right because <laughs> yeah. uh, they don't want to do hard things so how did you develop the mindset like that to want to do things that were challenging that made you really enjoy swimming above everything else I guess part of it was once I started like devoting myself to that seeing those results was so like um like addicting almost like I just wanted to keep getting better like the more time I dropped is like the more I wanted to do it again and again and then I think also part of it was um when I started losing my hair I threw myself into swimming and I think that that like distraction I had it was a way of like putting my mind on something else and putting all my energy and focus into something else and that helped me a lot because I was able to like get out of my own head like Mm -hmm. stop thinking about what was going on in my life and all of like the social or like school anything like that and focus solely on like one other thing that was important to me And having Mm -hmm. swim like every single day for two hours a day, I guess that was like, (laughs) that was like the best thing. Like I could escape my brain for two hours every day and like focus on that. Um, And then obviously just like the, how close you get with the people you're spending all this time with, like there's no one else you really have to, I mean, not many other sports you are killing yourself over and over again together with someone (laughs) i think that like in lacrosse during conditioning that's that's when it would get hard and that's when we bond but like there were so much more fun parts of practice there's so many more water breaks and like times that i was like enjoying myself i guess that like in swimming um it's like the the dying every day that really bonds you with the people and um i felt really really especially bonded with the kids on my swim team growing up so I think that that's also what kept me I wouldn't say it was like the fact that swimming was so hard but like everything else that had to do with it yeah Yeah. no that makes perfect sense you go through challenging things in life and different adversity and you start to embrace hard things because that's just a reality Mm -hmm. of life and um can you talk a little bit about that that process you talked about losing your hair and that dealing with that and having swim be very therapeutic for that what was that like for you because I feel like a lot of people don't have any idea um what that is like for sure. That was so that was like probably one of the hardest parts of like parts of my life, I would say. Um, so that started happening. I guess like it got really bad freshman, sophomore year. And that was also during COVID. So um, I was all virtual from school and um, I was really just trying to lose my hair in like chunks. And that was really tough for me. I was like always wearing hats or hoods like I never really wanted to like leave the house the only time I would leave the house was for a swim and um I just think that I was constantly like in my head in my thoughts um being at home the whole time definitely didn't help like always being in my room for school I did school from like my computer in my room and um like I was constantly alone with my own thoughts I think that was like really hard for me because that's what I was always thinking about like Mm -hmm. I like I don't know um but going to swim every day like that was like the the one time that I was not focused on that and um it that was just really helpful for me to like get my brain off of what was going on at home like not not at home but like what was going on in my own brain um Mm -hmm. and having something that I like was doing well at I think because also during my freshman sophomore year was when I started dropping all that time and like realizing that okay, maybe swimming is my sport. Like, maybe it's not lacrosse. Maybe I want to swim in college. Um, Maybe I want to, like, pursue that. And maybe I could even, like, make nationals. Like, who knows? And um, I I think that a lot of, like, having that success was really important for me when I felt like I was, like, failing in other aspects of life. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah that's so tough yeah I've, can you educate people on alopecia because i feel like yeah. people probably don't even know where to start with that and i'm sure there's so okay. many misconceptions i'm wondering if you can just educate some people yeah so alopecia it's very very different for everyone i think it's like very individual but um basically it's an autoimmune disease that where your immune system is attacking your hair follicles and um causing them to fall out because it thinks it's like a foreign invader um and it, it's very different for everyone some people well me personally since i got diagnosed in second grade i had like just small little bald patches like around my head but it was not noticeable at all my mom just saw it when she was like brushing my hair one day and she was getting a little nervous because my aunt also has it but she doesn't have it like very bad just like also small little patches so i ended up going to the dermatologist and um they told me i had alopecia areata which at the time is just like in small little areas not very noticeable um there's not really there's no cure so the treatments are very limited there and they don't always work so since second grade i would go to until like freshman sophomore year i would go once a month to dermatologists and get like steroid injections in like the bald spots and then I was also on these topical medications um, that I would put on every night. And um, so I basically continue with that until freshman year, until it started getting very bad and it would start falling out in clumps and it became noticeable to people. Um, and that's when it was getting really hard for me because I always thought that I was like, I felt like a very normal girl growing up. I, I've had hair for the majority of my life. So um, no one ever really noticed it until freshman year. It was never really a big deal for me. Um, I was even like gluten free too from second to eighth, like freshman year, because um, sometimes like celiac disease and um, alopecia can be like linked. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so my mom thought that, that that could be a factor, and it wasn't. So like eventually <laughs> sophomore year, I was just not gluten free anymore, which is one of, which was pretty nice. I could find like, <laughs> stuff again. Um, for sure. So I guess that's so sophomore year um i was like pretty much mostly bald but i still had like a few hair a few like patches of hair in places and um i was just like com i was so done hiding like i spent so much time crying about it and so much time just like always wearing a hood being so self-conscious i was always inside that was kind of easy because it was covid um it wasn't very hard for me to do that but yeah i hate i just hated it so much and um I also met this other swimmer at a meet who had alopecia and she was completely bald. And that for me was kind of, I think one of like the ticking, like the changing points. Cause I was just like, wait, like I could do that and I could rock it. And like, maybe I would feel so much less like I have to hide. Mm -hmm. And um, so my, some of my swim friends, we got like my dad's buzz, like his buzz cut thing that he like uses. Uh -huh. I don't even know what it's called. And um, <laughs> after practice one day, we just like shaved the rest of what I had left off. And um, that was kind of when I like, that was like the first step I think in like getting better and accepting like myself from there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's basically my journey with alopecia, I would say. And then cool. like my eyebrows fell out like the, a year after that. So, I still have eyelashes, which I think is nice, but um, it's very different for everyone. So some people like still have, like, it really just depends on the person. Uh, I still have, like arm hair and stuff, but yeah. 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 Thanks for, story, I would say. First of all, thanks for sharing that. That's amazing to hear from you. And I think what's really inspiring is that if anybody knows you, you're one of the most positive, confident, inspiring people that you'll ever meet, like that you'll ever come across. There's a reason why I wanted to talk to you on this podcast because you've inspired me um, since I had the blessing and privilege to work with you and get to know you as a person, as an athlete. And, but I'm wondering like, how did you get to that point? Cause you just talked about all the challenges and the adversity and the things that you had to go through as a high school girl, losing your hair, like the challenges of that. But then coming into the spot where you are now, like is amazing uh, like anyone who is around you is going to be blessed by you and i'm wondering how did you get there because obviously it wasn't just like a overnight like you're like okay i'm <laughs> I, I shaved it all off now i'm like perfectly you know um, yeah. confident and inspiring like but how did you get from that you know that point to where you are now 
Yeah, that was definitely, that was probably the other half of the journey that I haven't talked about yet. Like, even once I shaved my head, I, I wouldn't say, like, I was completely, like, confident automatically. I still would, like, cry every once in a while. It's hard when you, like, don't feel like you're, you fit the beauty standard as a high school girl. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was really hard to, like, grow into. But I would say, like, the one thing that I'm so lucky and grateful that I had was, like, such a good support system like obviously I didn't feel like anyone really understood what I was going through and that's like really hard because no one can that's not exactly like yeah. it's not a common thing that people go through but like my my mom my dad my close friends like they were always there for me and I think that that is so important because even when I felt like just completely unaccepted or like very um insecure they were always telling me like you're a beautiful inside and out like you there's no need to feel like insecure um and while I didn't always believe it I think eventually that like that helped set in like eventually mm -hmm. after them saying it so many times like I started to believe it myself and um so I'm just like really great especially my, my parents they they completely support the idea of shaving my head they were the ones that drove me to all of the treatments every month um and when I told them I wanted to stop doing that they were like that's totally fine mm -hmm. um when I said I didn't want to wear a wig, they're like, go for it. When I said I wanted to swim in college, they're like, can't, okay, can't wait. Like, <laughs> totally fine if you don't want to play anything else. Um, so awesome. I really think that that's, like, what helped me start to accept myself. And then just yeah. throwing myself into something that I loved, like swimming, I started to feel like that was a major part of my identity. Um, and then I loved myself because of how fast I was swimming or how hard I was working. And... I think that helped me a lot because I was like, mm -hmm. even if I'm not like, if even if I don't have the prettiest hair, like I still, like I'm a really good swimmer. Like I put so much effort into this every day. Like I love myself because of that. I think that helped yeah. a lot. I think you're digging into some really deep points and I appreciate you sharing all these things. Cause I think this can be helpful for so many people going through any kind of adversity. Uh, first of all, your parents are hundred percent right about everything. And that's amazing that you have the support Thank system you. that you do. It's so important to have a circle of people around you who love you, uh, through yeah. everything that you go through. Cause life is tough. Um, and people are, people are wicked, man. Like they're judgmental <laughs> and they don't understand and, um, ignorant in so many different ways. And, um, mm -hmm. But your parents are 100% right about everything. And um, I think you have the privilege of like already having depthy thoughts that a lot of people maybe never have about identity. Who am I? And yeah. Um, yeah. it's so much more than physical appearance. It's so much more than results in the pool. It's so much more um, than anything that that people can see. And everybody in their lives is going through something, right? The more you get to know people, mm -hmm. the more you realize everybody's going through something and um i'm wondering just like what do you feel like you've learned about who you are as a person or even advice you would give to people who are struggling with their identity because anything can be taken away from you at any point in time that yeah. you're putting your identity in so it has to be deeper right than just something yeah. you do or something about you um what what have you it's a deep question but what have you learned um of, as you've been like figuring out well who am i yeah, I think that's definitely a tough one because um, I feel like you never stop learning who you are. And I think I'm still like learning exactly. Like I, I wouldn't say I've like completely grown into myself yet because it's only been like two years since I've shaved my head. But um, I feel like I still have so much more to learn. I just think that like once you, once you develop like more of a positive mindset and you don't always feel like the world's out to get you and you're not always, you're not thinking, oh, what was me? Like, I, I lost all my hair. Like, where am I now? I think you just have to, like, look. This is so cliche, but you just have to, like, really look for the brighter, better things in the world because there always are. There's so much to, like, look forward to. There's so many, like, other things that you can get out and do. And I think once I, like, got out of that shell of just, like, hiding and everything, I realized that there are so many more friends I could make. I started making so many more friends with people in my school. Um there was so many other like clubs activities to join. I think that um, I guess like advice I would have is like, obviously things get really hard and things are tough and like everyone's going through something. Um, but, and it's so hard to, to just say that, to say this. And like, 
I know because I know other people what other people are going through but you really just have to look for like the positive side there's always there's always something that's like there's always like a rainbow shining through on the other side there's like mm-hmm. always something that you can do it's so hard to um to be going through something like that and just see the positive side of things but that's what I would say um I feel like I hid for so long and like I was just so so negative about everything and um I was like I felt very much like I was the only one going through it no one else really got what I was saying or like my feelings um and it's very easy to just like want to feel down and like be in your feelings all the time and think like oh no life sucks because I'm losing all my hair like there's nothing I can do about it um but the hard thing is really you just have to like want to want to feel better and like want to get out of that hole um and it's hard it's so much easier said than done just Mm. to like start thinking positively positively about life um but once you realize it's so much more to life and identity than like the beauty standard um like I think that's so freeing once I realized that like I don't need this so cliche but like I don't need hair to like feel beautiful or like feel like myself and be accepted into society that Mm -hmm. was so freeing um like I can be good at other things there's so much more in life for me than just like sitting in my room crying about how I don't (laughs) have some hair on my head like it's really it's not that it feels like such a big mountain like when you're in when you're at the bottom of it it really does feel like such a big mountain but like Mm. you have to realize that life isn't it's not that deep like I feel like once I got over this like it's just I got I had to get over it and once I did and it was really hard but once I did I felt so much better about it and I just had to like it was Mm. just like a mountain I had to climb and and it was hard but I started thinking positively and once I got there I felt better that's amazing. Uh, Megan, there's a lot of things that I admire about you. And one is that you have, so you were talking about your mindset. And I think that a lot of people don't know how to grow their mindset and to think differently than like the culture. So you talked about like the beauty standard and which yeah. is just so false. It's just so made up by other people. And so you're a hundred percent right. Like that it's, it's not something that at all restricts you. And I think your identity is, you said it's, it's not that deep, meaning like the hair loss, but what is deep is how you've realized that my identity is so much more than that, yeah. like so much deeper than that. Like I'm a whole person with so many amazing things um, to offer this world. And um, I think that that is inspiring because you do have to go through it. And I admire that you didn't just, you talked about like hiding and not wanting to hide. And you were just like, you know what, I'm just going to go through this. And you've discovered yourself in so many more beautiful ways than I think a lot of people ever will um, because mm-hmm. you had to go through this adversity and so I don't think any of that's cliche at all I think it's absolutely amazing and such a beautiful story and inspiring for anybody going through anything which is all of us are going through something yeah. and most of us are trying to hide from it right we want to project this image that there's nothing wrong with me like I'm not struggling with anything like everything's great it's it's why everybody loves social media and not yes, like so living true. real life, right? Like exactly. everything, everything you see on social media for the most part is fake <laughs> because it's all dressed <laughs> up. Maybe all of it. Like, you know, you don't get to pick from like 300 different pictures before you post one in real life. Like you walk in, you meet exactly. someone and there you are. Right. And that is so, so true. I just I'm I'm fired up listening to you. I'm inspired <laughs> by you. I think you're an amazing person. That your story is amazing, and just your the depth of your journey is so much more um, than people realize. And I wish people would take a step back um, and realize. Wait, like what have I been told is my identity mm-hmm. by like the culture, the people around me, versus what actually is it? Or like what have I been told beauty yeah. is versus like what actually is beauty and you'll find that like it's not at all <laughs> what people put out exactly. there yeah um so anyway sorry to be on the soapbox here i'm just <laughs> i i just absolutely love you and um look i really appreciate you sharing these things and i'm gonna i want to dive into a little bit of a different side of that too because mm-hmm. you have to deal with garbage that a lot of people don't have to deal with oh too. my gosh like, i can't so i want you to, <laughs> if, if you're okay with it just share like what are some assumptions that people make yeah. when they meet you for the first time or they talk to you what are some assumptions that you're like man i i I wish that people understood before they assume these things yeah there's 
I mean, because like when you meet someone, like you're going to have assumptions about them, and it's not like a bad thing necessarily. But I would say definitely like not like people. Not a lot of people know bald teenage girls, so it's definitely hard when you meet one for the first time. You don't really know what to think. But I know that a lot of people make the assumption that I haven't had hair my whole life. A lot of people think that I've been bald since I was like a baby, which is not like a harmful assumption, but um. It's always funny when I see their reaction. I'm like, yeah, I had, I had hair like two years ago. I still have like some hair brushes in my like my bathroom. But um, I think another like some of the more like harmful ones are when people, a lot of people like assume I have cancer, which I think is definitely a tough one because um, I have like nowhere near gone through like the pain of what people who do have cancer have gone through. But also it's just like, it's when people assume that and then they ask me about it. It's like, would you really say that to someone? Would you really like ask them like that in depth or without that respect? Like, would you really ask them like that? And I think that's like kind of heartbreaking. Um, yeah. Cause some people aren't respectful when they ask questions and like, I don't mind when people ask me like, like what, like, what do you have? Like, that's fine. I don't, that's fine with me, but it's when it's like disrespectful that I, don't appreciate it um but people are just curious and I do like I don't mind educating people on like what alopecia is and how it's like there's nothing really wrong with me like I feel fine like physically I'm not like sick um so I definitely think that those are like that's the worst assumption that people can make Mm. um other than that most people are pretty good about it um I get a lot of compliments by random strangers which I love um some people stare which I don't love like I kind of feel like like I'm in a zoo sometimes uh it's especially younger kids they're always like oh my god they they like they will stare heavily but um when like older people stare at me I'm kind of like okay like you know like you can take a look and then look away there's no need to like stare for that long but um yeah Yeah. I would say that's yeah those are so if you have gen- a question, if you have a question, definitely ask. Like that's totally fine. Just as long as you're you're just curious, like that's mm-hmm. totally fine. But yeah, yeah, that's frustrating to hear different assumptions like that. But also, yeah. like to hear how um, open you are. Like, hey, just ask me a question. Like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with me. And actually, like, I like talking about this, so you can understand mm-hmm. something maybe you don't understand. I think sometimes people are afraid to ask questions about something they don't know about. Um, and so to hear you say, like, just talk to me, um, I think is, is very freeing. And I'm sure you've had many people like that here. Like, I'm thankful that we just talk and then like, like any other question you would ask somebody, right? Yeah, exactly. No, it's so freeing when someone like in a very like respectful way asks me and I'm able to like almost tell a little bit about my story and and then they, they're happy to like learn something new. And I I like that. And that's a good exchange. That's awesome. Well, I think something that is inspiring to me um, above all as a person you are and how this has um, this journey has helped shape you. But uh, this is certainly not even close to your identity. It's a part of something you have, um, you know, in your life that is just Mm -hmm. um, a part of the process of helping you grow into the person you are. But uh, there's so much more than that. like we've talked about. And um, I'm wondering, I want to kind of shift a little bit and think about, okay, because of everything that you've been through um, in life, how did you, what was your journey like picking a school like William and Mary where you swim at now and um, you furthered your education? What was that journey like? And what stood out um, to you about them that made you be like, this is home for me? Yeah, I feel like I could talk about this for like hours. But um, when I went on my official there, I think the number one thing that really screamed at me was like the emphasis of family and like everyone has each other's back. And it sounds so cliche. I know like everyone probably says this about their team, but our mascots, the tribe, like we're the tribe. And when I think of tribe, I think of um, like a group of people who would like live and die for each other. And I really think that's like, something that we totally embody here because the moment I stepped on foot as a recruit on campus, I felt it. And when I left, I, I was like, wow, I could only imagine what it's like to actually be in on this team. And mm-hmm. when I got here, like 
I can feel it already. I feel so close to the majority of the swimmers. And um, I think it's just like the team chemistry, really. Like everyone is rooting for each other. It's competitive, but not in an ugly way. We like want each other to do well. We're always cheering at practice. One of my favorite things is like, it's never quiet. There's always like a go tribe or like, here we go guys, last one. Um, there's always someone calling out your name. And I think like every other round I'll have like a, here we go, Meg, like, let's go. Like you can That's do awesome. it. Um, I like doing it for other people too, especially for like, like me personally, I'm not a very good kicker. And a lot of people know that by now. So <laughs> whenever we get to the kick set, they're like, all right, Meg, like hang in there. And I'm like, oh, thanks guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do <laughs> think that um, team chemistry, like everyone wants each other to be successful. It's so important to me because when I had that like um, support group, like when I was going through something tough, like that was what really helped me. And I know that if I was to go through something hard again, like I would still have people like that now. Mm -hmm. Um, And even the coaches as well. I um, I think the coaches here were the, like I, when I was going through the process, they, I felt as though they wanted me the most. They made it very clear. Like they want me here. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, so many like texts like happy birthday it's just like the little things like happy birthday text how are you doing not even asking about the recruiting process yeah um just checking in on you as a person and they do that even today like when i got here for the first day like three weeks ago i got hugs from all of them um every day walking to practice how was your day how was class today um it's just so refreshing like they they want you to, to succeed as a swimmer and as, as a person as a academic student um and i'm so glad that i chose a place that like cares about you as a person i would say Mm -hmm. um and then obviously i'm very happy with like their rigorous academics i think that that is a that was a very i want to set myself up for like the future outside of swimming yeah um and i think that the classes here there's so much to offer um it's uh there's like you don't have to declare a major when you first get here so i like that because i don't know what i want to do with my life so i'm taking crazy different classes um (laughs) and overall i just had a really good experience and i'm definitely very happy with the place i've chosen i would say well one thing i didn't hear you say was that i came here (laughs) because they have really fast recruits and because they go (laughs) these times and they got this place at conference and i think Mm -hmm. that's so telling of what's actually important um yeah. and because obviously they're a great swim team but i think even more important uh is all the things that you just mentioned and yeah. i so wish that people would go through the recruiting process understanding it's so much more than the name of the school and the people who swim there what times they go mm-hmm. or the status of a certain coach um what advice would you give to someone who is in the recruiting process right now and struggle? And maybe you did struggle with those things too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I hear you saying now are all the things that I would want people to look for when they're actually picking a school, as opposed to what a lot of people like, Oh no, I'm not going to a power five or, Oh no, it's not yeah. like, um, yeah. what, what advice would you give either to your younger self or to people who are in the position that you were in going through that process to really finding the right fit for them? I would say it's a tough one, but like a hundred percent trust your gut, trust your feeling with like the people you meet and you want to like, obviously it's important to go to a place that you think you'll fit in like swim team, like time wise, like obviously everyone wants to go somewhere they think is going to make them better, but even more importantly, you want to, you're, you're going to want to enjoy it. And you want to know that the people you're with is um, people who are going to push you positively, not negatively. Mm -hmm. Um, so I definitely think when you get a vibe from places you visit and coaches you meet, like trust that, like their first impression, the first impression they make on you is very important. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, also, like I think something that I struggled a lot with was like asking questions. I was so shy and scared that I was gonna ask a stupid question or like be annoying. Like there are no <laughs> stupid questions. No one knows what they're doing when they're being recruited and like, we've had some recruiting trips and like the recruits that I've met, they have been asking questions and I'm, I've been so happy to answer them because I knew that I was terrified to ask questions when I was like going on mm-hmm. trips and everything. So yeah. um, like we're people, 
are going to be happy to answer them. Coaches are going to be happy to answer them. It means that you're interested. So never feel that a question is dumb or stupid. And then like the last thing I would say is just be yourself. You don't want to be quiet. They can't get a good idea of who you are if you're quiet. And that means they can't fall in love with your personality. So yeah. like you really, obviously you're not trying to make them fall in love. You want to fall in love with their school. But um, I think that the more comfortable you are around people, the more you can like explore their school and who they are as a team. So I would just say like, don't be shy, be open and like, let them know who you are. That's great advice. Plus when you do that, you're going to, they're going to see who you really are and Mm -hmm. you're going to get a feel of if it's a good fit, a better feel if it's a good fit for you. Cause if you're being fake or shy or reserved, (laughs) um, then you're not going to get the feel that you want. So, um, mm-hmm. I just, I love that. That's perfect advice. Um, and, um, if anybody is going through that process right now and super stressed about anything, like hear the words that Megan just said and follow up, <laughs> and then you can end up somewhere where she's now gushing about her school, <laughs> William and Mary and, and, mm-hmm. and loving it. That's where I want everyone to be. Um, well, last question I have for you, Megan, and I really appreciate your time today. It's been incredible. Um, but I got to ask you, so, um, now that you're in college and, um, so what you were a part of swim strong dry land in high school, yeah. I want to ask you, what was your favorite memory from oh. swim strong? Like, I actually really think hands down was elite camp. Um, that was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Um, and it was hard too. So that really puts it in perspective, but, um, I just, I loved everyone that I met there at the camp. And I think I still have, I met so many people. We still talk in the group chat we made like all the time. Um, the people I've met and even the people I already knew and got closer with. It, it's just like such a different environment. It even changed my mindset even more. I thought I was a pretty positive person going into it. But um, just he, seeing people get so excited to do something hard, like, always cheering when there's a challenge set going crazy um (laughs) getting so loud before like the last swim of the last relay of the meet when we're all like dead tired um (laughs) it's so inspiring and it's so refreshing because i feel like on your club teams you always get those people that are just there to be there and Mm. always tired and never want to do the set um it was just so refreshing to like see people who love swimming so much and like that i always try to embody that now i guess Like Mm -hmm. I said, going into college, I'm always going to try to be that person that is like ready and excited to do the challenging set. Um, And that's definitely hard. I'm still working on it. When I see a kick set, I do (laughs) groan and complain about it, but I'm working on it. Um, And so I definitely think that elite camp just gave me a whole different perspective on swimming. Um, But besides that, like doing it for, I guess, like a year and a half, um, I worked out with like some of my best friends, like Katie um and a lot of kids on my team who were in like um solo groups I guess um because we weren't like a team but we a lot of us did it we just spent so much time together like outside of practice in the weight room and like getting like doing push-ups all together we would do like the challenge week we did test outs we all cheered for each other I think it was just a really nice bonding experience and um I felt so strong after it so I wouldn't really (laughs) change it yeah yeah that's awesome no thanks for sharing that it was uh it's honestly it's always the people right it's always the people that make it the experiences that you remember is the way that you know not what people said to you but the way they made you feel the community that you had the friendships that you make and um that's really cool to hear and things that we hope people we hope people leave with from being a part of a part of the program and um you know you have left your mark on um me and uh, many other people in the program too and so um forever a part of the family and um just exciting to see the things that you're doing uh now and at the next level and can't wait to see you know where life takes you because you're going to be changing the world wherever you go but megan it was awesome having you on here thanks so much for taking the time thank you so much for having me thank you for listening to the swim strong dry land podcast If you'd like to be a part of the Swim Strong Dry Land family, you can reach out to us via email or social media. You can also follow Swim Strong Dry Land on YouTube and TikTok for more educational content.